Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. We wanted to tell today one of the stories that isn't widely known, and that is the almost total destruction of the Greek Jewish community during the war and where over 90% of the Greek Jews were murdered. And today we had the opportunity to honor the survivors who we hear, the children of survivors. And we also had in, had in attendance the Israeli ambassador to Greece who was able to tell us really what the situation was, what's going on there today as well. So most Jews of Greece are Jews originally of, and in fact in Saloniki, they spoke Ladino. Ladino is a dialect of Spanish. Most of them didn't even speak Greek. Greece has the, the highest uh, percentage of Jews killed in the Holocaust, more than any other country, which uh, about 87% of the Greek Jews uh, were murdered, and 92% in the city of Saloniki, which was the largest uh, Jewish uh, community. Although we know all the facts and we grew up with them, it's still unbelievable that in the middle of the 20th century, it was supposed to be the most enlightened of, cent of centuries. That this could have happened, it's still unbelievable to us, even today. If you had a chance to walk through the exhibit a little bit earlier, you might have seen some photos of my family. There's a photo there of my grandfather, Kalef. Some photos with my aunt, Lena Russo, and my father, the late Benny Elias. He was 15 at the time that the family was deported. His mother, his little sister, his little brother, he was separated from them immediately upon arrival in Auschwitz and they were sent directly to the gas chambers. He and his other brother and his father stayed together for as long as possible. There were a lot of stories my dad told me of close calls. In fact, the day that he was liberated, April 15th, was the morning of liberation, his barrack was supposed to go to the gas chambers. My father's family name in Greece was Eliao. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to go on the March of the Living. My father gave me this list of names, and he specifically asked that I speak them with the name Elias. That was his preference. What it means to be a descendant of Holocaust survivors, I'm still trying to figure that out, <laughs> because I think it is kind of a big weight to carry. I'm not complaining about it. It's just something that um, I'm working out over time, I guess. It is said that so horrendous was their journey that most could barely stand and the majority would go straight to the gas chambers. It is said that the only sound heard coming from the cattle cars was the sound of silence. Uh, where the normal journey in Europe was about three days in those horrible cattle cars. The shortest journey from Greece was five to six days. The Jews arose, it took two weeks before they reached Auschwitz-Birkenau. So by the time these Jews got out of the cattle cars and the, the process of selection was whether you were going to be useful, whether you could work in the camps, the majority of them were chosen disproportionately to go directly to the crematoria, to the gas chambers. There would only be 10,000 Jews left in Greece. There are only 5,000 left there now. A small remnant of a once very important community. Initially, when the Jews of Greece came back from the concentration camps and they told people what had happened, their fellow Greek Jewish citizens, no one believed them. And they said to them, go on with your life. You know, forget about what happened. Build a family, get married, have other children. Um, that, the Greek Civil War, the fact that the world really didn't want to hear their story, it took years before it came out. Our story, unfortunately, has become the orphan child of Holocaust studies, a footnote, an afterthought. And therefore, I am so, so deeply indebted to the museum here for enabling us to tell our story the outside world. Thank you.